Welcome to Endoscopy on Air and watch Michael Berg managing a duodenal adenoma. Um, this is a bulky duodenal polyp. So duodenal polyps, first thing, these patients have a three to seven fold increased risk of uh, colonic neoplasia. So they all need a colonoscopy. And then the other thing is to establish where the papilla is. The papilla we previously looked was up here. There it is, right? So um, you, otherwise you're risking pancreatitis. So you must always know the, where the papilla is. And if you're not sure, you put down a side viewer. Um, okay, so major risk of bleeding afterwards, which for polyps larger than three centimetres is 25%. So again, uh, we're going to start with a submucosal injection of... Uh, Gel effusion, needle out, thanks. Inject a drop. Yeah, we always use a pediatric colonoscope because of the orientation of the working channel. See, it's just like colonoscopy. Uh, inject. Duodenum lifts really easily. Inject, come on, faster, faster. Go uh, why not a cap? Do you, do you, do there you we go. So pipe? see, originally, we didn't get a lift straight away. You must get an immediate lift. Go, 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 go. Okay, go, more. Um, I think we definitely do use it around the D1, D2 junction. And of course, Evelyn Deck has shown that you can see the papilla easily with, if you put a cap on the scope. In fact, most of the time you can see it with a current generation of gastroscopes because of the wider field of view. Um, so we'll put some lift up as well, and then we'll proceed with... Con this is a bulky lesion, so if it was flat, we'd do, convent we'd do cold snare excision. Um, if they're less than yeah, four we, centimetre we, been... thing. We're doing uh, the same thing with our FAP patients. Needle back, that's fine. Let's have the snare. Let's have the 15 captivator. Um, so the, the cold but snare so... excision in the duodenum for the FAP patients has been a lifesaver. You can control the burden of the disease with absolutely no risk to the patient. Okay, so again, uh, where to start? So we could yeah, take this. The other thing we sometimes front, see, so we open, what we used to see with hot snaring, particularly very large lesions, is you get a lot of duodenal deformity when you go back. And in FAP, of course, they, they do tend to get recurrent polyp. Close, and then you've close. got a problem with access. Close, close, close. But less so with cold. Yeah. Yeah, the lumen, it doesn't, it doesn't result in any uh, luminal stenosis. Yeah. You see little scars, but nothing, nothing extensive. So again, we check the mobility, and then just your, your diathermy setting side. there, Michael. What, what diathermy are you using? Same, the same, same settings as we use in the colon, and water jet into the defect. And we do, and we do the same thing. We do the snare tip here as well. Um, the snare tip has reduced recurrence, which historically is around twenty percent to zero in a cohort of 50 patients with polyps like this. Um, so close slowly, close slowly, good, good, good. Okay, all right, so same thing again. So we check mobility. Would you um, ever do, do ESD in the, in the duodenum? Um, well, I, any duodenal cancer, um, needs to go to surgery mm. so you're not anyone with superficial invasion is not being saved in operation open thanks unless they're older uh, but we do it for the submucosal tumors so for car for net net tumors we definitely do um uh close close they're most commonly in d1 which makes it easier um and it's very safe very safe very effective um, this almost looks as though you're in the colon. It's, it's extraordinary. It's this, exactly the same technique, isn't it, with a few modifications? Yes. Yeah. Go, go, go. Have you ever retroflexed, Michael, in the, uh, in, okay. in the duodenum with a gastroscope? Yeah. yeah, we do needle back. This sort of duodenum would be very easy to retroflex in to look, not with this scope, but with a gastroscope, to look at the D1, D2 junction from underneath. And it's an invaluable technique to, to um, do resection around that area. You get a much better view. Um, you get the forward view and then you get the retroflex view. Open things. But in, in a bulky That's lesion like this, even though you can't see the back of it clearly, as you debulk, you make space 
and it'll become easier to get onto the back. Exactly, yeah. Close. So sometimes you need, close, close, close. You need to take the dominant nodule at the front of the lesion away and then, uh, I don't think this is going to get easier, but um, uh, so water jet, okay. So again, uh, on this margin, just keep holding, good. The juice, just for my interest, go, 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 go. good, good, good. Um, I think he had a positive FOBT and had a nice screening upper it. endoscopy. Yeah, he had a iron deficiency anemia. Okay, yeah, commonly, yeah, close. Same with papillary adenomas. So good margin of normal tissue. And again, you see, I'm working systematically from the edge of the resection defect. So I'm not just taking random pieces. I work from the edge of the defect um, and work my way along. So just Nick, just hold the scope here. Okay, so I changed to, so whenever there's a scarred area, you have to be, just hold, hold. Yeah, you have to be more conservative. So we changed to a smaller snare. Um, we'll submit this scarred area separately for histology. And we'll flag the fact that we're worried there could be something else going on, such as submucosal invasion. I think there won't be, but it's possible. Um, open things. So go up here. So I want to go on the other side. Keep holding. Slowly close, close, close. Resistance, don't cut through. Yep. So, okay. Michael, you've got about so, two more. We've got about two more minutes of live. We've got about two more minutes of live. Okay. So I, put, that. I put my hip against the bed, and I work just with the scope. Now, learning this technique is a good stepping stone to ESD because the movements are very similar. Because you use the 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 snare tip as a wand to paint the margin of the lesion. Wonderful start to this, this amazing meeting. So I guess we'll just take off this nodule here. And then uh, we might be able to see over the back a little bit more in that way. So yeah, just uh, open the snare there. Open right full, yeah. Oh, well, we probably want to move back to the 15, although that's, that's pretty well got that, yeah. that area there. So it's just closed there. Okay. Oh, does it? Close. Pull back slightly. Oh, okay. Push in a bit. Push in a little bit. Push in. No. No. Hold there. Open. Oh, sorry. You know. Uh, Rotate. Oh yeah. It's yeah. nice photos. Yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> we were in need of um Hold there. DMI five. Open things. No, not DMI four. Yeah. Who's calling it guys? Yeah, we're just going now. Okay, doing well. Yeah. Yeah, the issue is see how mobile her transverse is? Mm. That's that's why the so easy to get a DMI.
And here we have the follow-up of the patients as well as the devices used and at the end Michael Burke's recommended reading.